The ECU is in, it's in! Stay tuned to find out what I got. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Matt. I just want to start off before I show you what I got and I unbox this thing. This is not a sponsored video in any way. I use my own hard working money <laughs> to purchase this. And to prove that, here are some words that you might enjoy. All you gotta do is say earmuffs to them. Earmuffs. Hairy nutsack. Whisker biscuit. Cock. Balls. Okay, I'm just proving a point. You don't have to celebrate it, Frank. Now, if this were sponsored, I probably wouldn't be saying any of those things. So I'm going to talk about this freely as to why I chose this ECU and the other things that go along with it versus another brand. Let's go ahead and unbox it. I'm excited. Let's go. Wow! I went with FuelTech. And I'll show you what I got here. Just for the record, one of the companies I had thought about going with was ECU Master, their EMU Black. Because they're pretty affordable, easy to use. I looked at their tuning software, downloaded it. Filtex is just as easy, very similar features, but an ECU Master comes with a built-in O2 controller. So that means I wouldn't have to buy a new Bosch sensor for my wideband reading. One of the reasons I decided to go with FuelTech was the fact that it, it had a touchscreen and I'm able to use that touchscreen to start up the car because we're going to be bypassing essentially the starter with the key. I'll use a button on the FuelTech to start the car. Uh, it, I'll, I'll, I'll show you, let me show you what I got and then we'll kind of walk through. Hmm, peanuts. So here's the little packing order slip. A shit ton of peanuts. Huh. I guess they send you some vacuum hose, some of the uh, pneumatic hose, so it's that hard plastic pneumatic hose. This is one of the wiring harnesses. I'll explain what this goes to. This goes to my, my Nano. Basically, it's the wiring harness to go to. It's a Nano Pro. I'm going to show you all that here in a second. And it communicates via CAN to the ECU. That's one of the reasons I was saying that the ECU Masters, I had thought about going with them because it already has that built in. But, however, FuelTech does not. So you have to buy either their Nano or Nano Pro along with their wiring harness, which is an additional expense. And FuelTech comes with, or you have to purchase, two separate harnesses for, I forgot the FT550, which I'm about to show you here in a second. <laughs> There's an A and B connector for your ins and outs and all the stuff it controls. Um, we'll get a close up of this stuff, but this is an unterminated harness here. So I'm gonna have to pin all this into my stock wiring loom. We'll talk about that more. Hold on. So here we go. We got the Nano Pro, which is essentially this controls the wideband O2 reading, and it's a little built-in touchscreen, and it acts as a, a switch panel as well. So I could wire a bunch of stuff up into the fuel tech and control fans, all kinds of stuff from here. But I'll probably end up using this not only for my, just to have the wideband reading here a little larger, but I'm also gonna use this thing as a push start. So I can just touch it and it'll start the car and kick the starter off whenever the, the engine started, so. There's that. And then the sauce, the meat and potatoes here. These are the Cubans, baby. These are the Cohibas, the Monte Cristos. The FT550. Let's unbox this and I'll talk a little bit more about why I decided to go with this. Fun stuff, exciting. What else do we got here? Okay, we'll start with the meat and potatoes of this all. So I got the FT550 because I need to be able to, I thought about the 450, but you're really limited on the amount of inputs and outputs to control your engine essentially. 
and the FT550, albeit more expensive, will give me the ability to control my fly-by-wire throttle body, my VVT, both the intake and exhaust camshafts, uh, as well as my fuel pump, the, the fans to the radiator, everything I need to basically take away from the car controlling, and I'll be able to control all that with the FT550. It's got some fairly nice packaging here. <coughs> Oh, well, isn't that convenient? Was well, this the, the seal that you haven't opened it? Oh, yeah. Vo void. I just bought the damn thing and it's already void. I could have found a way around that, but <laughs> we plan on using this anyways. Hello, Fuel Tech welcome box for whatever that's worth. Mm, there's something fun in here. Stickers. So I did talk to them, or at least reached out to not only Fuel Tech, but also ECU Masters about some sort of sponsorship. Now, who knows? I might be able to work with them in the future, but those stickers aren't going on anything. I'm not trying to rep them. That's going in the garbage. That's going in the garbage. Now we got some mounting screws, it looks like, for the Fuel Tech, and then our wire to communicate with the ECU. You got a quick install guide. What the hell is this? Oh, hot keys. All right. That'll be helpful. Anyhow, we got a little guide here, some foam, and then we've got the fuel tech ECU itself. Got a cool little protective cover, I imagine, while you're installing the thing, you can have that on there. Or, if, I don't know, for some reason, maybe. You only want to buy one of these things and just get the wiring harness, use it in multiple vehicles, who knows. It does have a built-in map sensor, so I don't have to worry about wiring that up. And this reads up to 100 PSI of boost. And you've got your A and B connectors here, which is the reasoning behind two harnesses. You got inputs going in, signals going out. And let's see what this, this is a lot smaller than I thought it would be. This is my hand. I by no means have small hands, but I mean, <laughs> I don't know why, but I thought this would be a little bit bigger. I thought your hair would be bigger. It look like a peanut. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if we can at least fire this thing up. <laughs> what? <laughs> Take it, this is, I guess the little standoff mount of some sort. I don't know, we'll, we'll look into that. I do plan on removing the stock dash and putting this under there, either 3D printing or just cutting out some sort of plate for all that stuff to mount to. As this is pretty much gonna be my speedo, my tachometer, all that junk. But there we have it. It's exciting, but I mean, there you go. I guess it's kind of like getting a new phone. What am I even doing? All right, so here's, <laughs> I feel like I'm almost a little more excited to take a look at this thing. Oh, you're gonna avoid me again? Is this what this is? Jesus. All right, here goes my void, voiding it. Let's see what's inside here. Oh, holy crap. Why does everything look? Just so much smaller in person than, all right, we got some instructions, fantastic. Why, I feel like Apple watches are bigger. <laughs> what is going on, Fuel Tech? I feel deceived here. There we go, it was nice, nice little uh, wrist watch there. No, I'm sure it will be a great little de device, but geez, we're, the cost of it, I think you can get, uh, a little more, I don't know. But this is also a touch screen. You can display all kinds of different parameters. Uh, again, I'll probably use this as a start stop button and then have it go to my O2, maybe, maybe oil pressure and that's it. I don't know, temperature, 
just to have something to focus on a little more. Who knows? We shall see. We're not quite there yet. And then we've got our different harnesses. Let's see what kind of headache we're gonna have to deal with here. Yeah, looks like a wiring. Ooh, that smell. I like that. That's a nice smell. This is one of the harnesses. Um, not sure which number. Gear. A gear sensor. So I guess if you have a transmission that allows you to basically tell the ECU what gear you're in, you can have more controls like boost by gear kind of functions, but we're not quite there yet. Baby steps, people, baby steps. Here's the other harness. Let's see if there's anything extra special about it. Which, they're reasonably priced. Uh, this might be, yeah, let's see, A. And your little can connector to your wideband controller. Yeah, yeah, looks like a, a headache. A headache in a bag but it'll be worth it. Then we've got our wiring harness for the Nano. Which we'll figure out how all this stuff hooks up. This goes to the sensor, which I already have a 4.9 sensor in the car from the AEM. Well, there you have it. And then there's nothing really special about this. I have a crap ton of that stuff laying around. Well, that uh, about does it. I went with Field Tech. I'm actually really excited to install this stuff, even though I'm kind of downplaying it. Maybe just a little, little butt hurt that nobody replied and was like, yeah, let us do something. Maybe we'll give you a, a discount or some sort of code. But anyways, so the AEM that I have on the car, the, the boost controller, wideband sensor that goes to my HP tuners, the my two-step thing. It's probably, I'd say, I don't know, maybe close to $800 worth of stuff that I will no longer be using and that this fuel tech will control. <laughs> Hindsight 2020 kind of thing, instead of paying, I think it was around $500 for HP tuners, a little over $300 for the AEM wideband, another $300 for the boost controller, $250 for that in into MB watt box two-step things. So now this will control all of that. This tiny little unit here will control everything. And you know, I guess it's a, a good thing that it is nice and compact because then I can put it behind a steering wheel and I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm gonna remove the cluster out of the dash and that's going to be the dash and we'll just let the car complain about it moving and it, the engine not running, but we'll figure it out. I've already started doing some research. I'll post some of the diagrams I found here. I think it was alldata.com. It was like 20 bucks to access all this stuff for my particular make and model vehicle, which with the 1.8 Cruise is the LUW because it has an ECU with only one in, one out on it. I believe the automatic 1.8s have a different ECU with uh, another out for the automatic transmission, which is its whole own ordeal. So now I've, I've got to figure out how to wire this thing up. I might bypass the fuel pump control module and just hardwire it into straight up to this fuel tech. And it doesn't seem too bad, but I'm not under the hood right this second, which we'll get to in the next video. We'll start working on wiring this thing up, getting it running off the fuel tech. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know if you're all right or if you're even close or even thought I'd even get a fuel tech. Be sure to like, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.